Hello everyone. This video demonstrates how to use Clamp to build a hybrid system which combines machine learning and roles to extract lab test concepts and their values from clinical texts. Input will be a collection of discharge summaries and output could be lab test concepts mentioned in the text with some attributes such as its offset, negation status, UMLS cues, as well as its lab values. This is how the user interface of CLAMP system looks like. On the left corner of the CLAMP system, there are built-in components for assertion, chunking, and name entity recognition. Below that is the corpus window that can be used for annotation management. The corpus management system also lets you retrain the model based on the annotated corpus. At the bottom is where you actually build a pipeline for your specific project. In this example, we will build a pipeline called Lab Test. To create a pipeline, first click on the green plus sign at the top of the page. Give your project a name and from the NLP task section, choose NLP pipeline. So once you click finish, the pipeline project is added to the bottom window. If you look at it right now, it is all empty. What we need to do is drag and drop all the different components, and this can usually start with a sentence detector. But for now, let's just say that we want to do machine learning components based on the machine learning NER. In this case, we are missing a few components. This can be corrected quickly by clicking Autofix, which adds the obligatory components required for running the machine learning base NER. Next, Let's add some assertion components and a rule engine. For fun, let's also throw in the UMLS encoder rule engine. So once we build this pipeline, let's save it. You can now start to actually look at the corpus to train the machine learning model based on the annotated corpus. To create a corpus, first click on the green plus sign at the top of the page. Give your project a name and from the NLP task section, choose corpus annotation. Then press finish. Then we have a lab corpus tab on the left side here. Opening it, you will see that there are different folders called training and tests. The typedef file actually lets you define the entities for our annotation task. On the corpus, the elements and semantic types you can annotate. For example, here, let's just annotate all the lab tests and assign them the lab code test. To do so, right-click on Entities from the Displaying menu. Select Add Child, and then click New Element. Next, enter Test on the input and click the OK button. Finally, click the Save button. To start the annotation, we first copy the collection of text to the training folder. After importing the files, let's make sure to save it and then open the file to start annotating. Right click on the word for annotation and call it a test. Of course, this is wrong, so you can delete it. There are about 50 discharge summaries here that have already been pre-annotated with all the lab test names. Copy and paste them into the train folder.
So now that we have all of those annotated texts, what we will do is go to the training folder and click on the training icon, which will train a machine learning based NER model using the annotated corpus. The pop-up shows the predefined features of different types, including several unsupervised learning features from large and unlabeled word embedding features. Including all the features for building the model may take a while. So here, since we were trying to do this quickly, let's just keep two features, the word embedding feature and the word shape feature. Let's also select the five-folded cross-validation for evaluation purposes. Clicking train will initiate the task of training the model using the annotated corpus. So right now in the models folder, a new model folder is being generated which contains the details of the results from the training run. The training log file shows the results from the five-fold cross-validation for the precision recall and F measure for this particular training set, which is about 6.65, and that is quite reasonable, mostly due to the word embedding feature. Now, in the output folder, if you click one of the outputs, you can see the comparison between the gold standards and the predicted results. So, for example, over here you see only the gold standard but not the predicted results. That means that this is a false positive. This next example has both the gold standard and the predicted results being the same, so it is identified correctly. The next one is a false positive again because it does not show the predicted results, so this helps you to find the errors made by the machine learning algorithm easily. Okay, now that we have the model ready, what we can do is copy the model file and move it to the pipeline we already built. Here, we will replace the default model file with the new model file by opening the configuration file and clicking the browse button and selecting the model file that we just added. Now, pretty much if we go here, we can actually run this pipeline because it is already built on the lab test annotation. Before we start, we need to add the text for analysis in the input folder. Let's open the folder that contains our text files that we want to use for prediction. Let's just use these four documents. We copy it and paste it into the input folder. Now we have four input documents and are ready to run the program. Click on the green arrow button to start running the program. Since there are four files, it is very fast. If you look at the output folder, it has both text as well as XMI files. If you look at XMI files, you will see the highlighted lab tests predicted by the model. The term digoxin can be either a drug name or a lab test name, and that's why it is ambiguous. So it is not recognized by the system. To solve this kind of ambiguity, we actually need to specify rules using the rule interface. For example, if you highlight this term, it will pop up a link to define rules. In this example, we can define a rule as where we check if it's in the lab test section. If you see the word digoxin in lab test section, then we label it as test. And if there are other additional information that you can use to determine the labeling for the words. For example, token or POS tagging before or after the word can determine the label for the word and this can be specified in this specify in the simple interface. When we click OK, it actually writes out a rule to the rule engine and we can look at the rule engine folder to see how the rule file looks. 
We open the RUDA rule engine file and can find the default RUDA file under the RUDA script file folder. Basically, here we are saying for each sentence, if you see that if that it is in the lab test section and you see this word digoxin, then you are asking the system to label it as test. So it is actually quite straightforward and very readable for humans. So this is a type of rule at the word level that can help to solve the ambiguity in words. You can actually further specify more general rules for use in the system. For example, here we have a rule that we have generated previously that we can copy into the system. So what this rule says is this. If you see anything in the medication section which is labeled as test, just remove the label from it. Basically, no lab tests in the medication section. Okay, so now you click save and run again. And if we go back to the XMI file with the results, you can see that you now get digoxin as a lab test. This shows you how exactly we can combine this machine learning and rules to reach a better performance. The rules can actually help to extract a lot more information. For example, let's see how to write some rules to detect lab test values. From the previously developed rules in the rule file, let's copy the remaining rules and paste it here to the default RUDA file. So let's see what these rules talk about. The first set of rules is about how to detect numbers in the clinical text. That could be numbers with commas, periods, or numbers with percentages. Once we detect the numbers, the second set of rules specify that if a test is followed by a number, then the number should be assigned as a lab test value, which will be used as attribute and allocated as attribute 1 to the lab test named entity. So for every single entity, we can reserve up to four different attributes, which you can specify in the rule engine. The next rule specifies that even if the number is one or two tokens away from the lab test, it can still be recognized and assigned as the lab value for the lab test. So now if we run the pipeline again, look at the result XMI file. you see that the numbers are highlighted in red as lab values. If you right click on the test and look at the details, you'll see that it has actually recognized the number as attribute one for the lab test, which is assigned as lab value. This is a simple sort of way to link a value to a lab test. And if we do not want to see the lab value entity, then we can actually further remove it by removing the backslash in front of the rule. This just removes the display. You see it when we run again and just show the attributes about the lab test values without really highlighting the lab values. So this is a very simple demonstration of how you can actually recognize lab tests and its associated value by using machine learning and rules. Of course, the reality is in order to carefully extract lab values, it's probably more complicated than this. This is because we also have lab value units which can sometimes be presented combined together with the numbers and we need more detailed rules to differentiate them. Basically, this demonstration shows you how we can combine machine learning with the rules to extract lab tests and its values. Thank you.